Oh my god! You scared me out of a year's death. I had no idea you were up here ahead of me like that. Man, you scared me just that. Don't come on, don't sneak up on a guy like that, you know? Uh, but but since you're up here, I guess we might as well go ahead and have another mask fanatic segment. Mask fanatic with the mask fanatic now here in the attic tonight our cool mask and it's a beauty too beautiful mask tonight's mask uh, by which I mean the one that is nearest to me right now and yet conveniently out of camber range that's what makes it tonight's mask is this wonderful offering from Death Studios the gargoyle from the 1972 TV movie gargoyles now uh, the movie gargoyles again made for TV Often uh, still regarded as one of the finest made-for-TV horror movies, monster movies of all time, and with good reason. Really, to say it's one of the best made-for-TV uh, horror movies is almost to diminish it and, and its, its greatness, its professionalism, its effectiveness, because I think it's good enough it could have played theaters. It's, it's a, go a good, solid monster movie any way you look at it. And the fact that it was made for television just makes it all the more amazingly cool, okay? Uh, and and when I say one of the best uh, made-for-TV horror movies of all time, see, that's comparing it with uh, the kind of monster movies they make today and in more recent years. Uh, if, those of you who watch the Sci-Fi Channel a lot, you know what I'm talking about. Like, uh, you know, movies with titles like Squid Shark vs. Bugbear on a Train During a Tornado 2. I think that was last night's uh, movie of the week on the Sci-Fi Channel, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we'll look that up. But anyway, uh, 1972, this great made-for-TV movie, Gargoyles, came out starring Bernie Casey as this character, who is not given any other uh, name in the film other than the Gargoyle, although there are a lot of other Gargoyles in the film, too. Uh, he was their leader, but he didn't have a special name. He was just the Gargoyle. And, oh, here's an interesting, uh, let, me, let me wander off to the side for a moment, like I often do, with a little trivia footnote here for you uh, monster trivia buffs. Uh, the voice you hear coming from this uh, gargoyle character in the movie is not the voice of Bernie Casey, the actor in the makeup. It's the voice of Vic Perrin, another actor who was in tons of uh, other stuff and, and did lots of voiceover work for cartoons and so forth. He was the voice of the gargoyle and if his voice sounds familiar to you it may be because you remember him as the control voice from the classic TV series of the 1960s The Outer Limits so uh, when the gargoyle played by Bernie Casey in the makeup speaks in the movie Gargoyles you're hearing the voice of the control voice from The Outer Limits Vic Perrin and now back to our regularly scheduled talk about the mask there had already been, in uh, I believe 1982, in that neighborhood, there had been a, a Distortions Unlimited version of this same character. Very similar, nearly identical, uh, a little bit darker color, slightly smaller, and uh, generally made of uh, black latex rather than uh, natural latex. Although, there may have been some Death Studio ones made of black latex. I don't know. I didn't see them all, you see. but. Uh, the Distortions one came along in 82, this one came along in 85. Now, which one do I like better? I like different things about each of them. Um, I would say the horns look a little better on this one in terms of being uh, movie accurate. Uh, and, and this one is a little bigger, as noted previously. Uh, however, one thing I like better about the Distortions one is that it was a little bit of a duller color, more of a uh, duller color, that rhymed, didn't it? Uh, more of an olivey kind of green, a little gray, a little brown in it, not quite so bright, greener than green, like the Death Studio one. And I think I like that dull color a little better, just because it looks a little more like he looks to me when I watch the movie. And also, uh, interestingly, both the Distortions and Death Studio versions of The Gargoyle had these uh, white, or yellowy white, off-white eyeballs, with a little teeny black pupil in the center. But when I watch the movie, what I see is a black or maybe very dark red eyeball and the only white being uh, the iris. So the couple, of, um, the couple of distortions ones that I painted a million years ago myself, I painted them uh, with black eyes and a white iris and then a little pupil. But I don't know, that's just me. I don't know if anybody else ever painted them that way. All the ones I've seen of either version, the death or the distortions, had the yellowy white eyes all over and then just 
the little pupil in the center being black. Uh, now these were uh, both the distortions and death versions were uh, developed from original molds from the movie, uh, which by which I'm talking about this uh, crest or ridge or whatever you care to call it. It runs down the center of his head. Uh, this one, the facial parts of it and the non-original movie mold parts were sculpted, of course, by Jeff Keim of Death Studios. And I don't know how many of these are out there, but I'm, I'm thinking not that many because it seems like collectors would kill for one of these. Luckily for me, there isn't anybody I need killed, so I can probably hang on to this one a little while longer, you see. Uh, but there was also a, a top stone version, but theirs was uh, cheaper and thinner and really less of a collectible. That came along later still, and it looked, um, it looked more like the distortions version than the death version. So if you ever see kind of a cheesy, thin, not too great version of this character, it could be uh, the top stone, which kind of looks like a knockoff of the distortions, basically. You with me? If it, yeah, close enough. Anyway, uh, created for the movie, by the way, by uh, Ellis Berman Jr., whose father, Ellis Berman Sr., for those of you who are a bit slow to pick up, whose father, Ellis Berman Sr., has sculpted a number of great Halloween masks back in the day, including a number of early Don Post Studios masks that are very hard to find now. And uh, the effects for the movie, Gargoyles, not only were they done by um, the illustrious Ellis Berman Jr., but uh, they were also uh, the work of the soon-to-be legendary monster maker and fantastically talented and imaginative artist, Stan Winston. And this was the first credit for Stan Winston, was as part of Ellis Berman Jr.'s makeup crew on gargoyles and together those guys made these wonderful monsters for that movie and one interesting thing about the movie that makes it fun to watch if you're a monster buff or a mask lover is that the gargoyles all look different they don't they don't all look like this one this is the only one that looks this humanoid some of them have strange beaks and ridges and and uh, just all kinds of different uh, really imaginative faces and design work going on so a lot of imagination in the Berman family, that's for sure. Although, since Ellis Berman Jr. was the son of Ellis Berman Sr., and Ellis Berman Jr., I believe, had a son later on and named him Ellis Berman, so then there was an Ellis Berman III, um, I, I would have to say the imagination and the great creativity was, it was in the family, but it was kind of confined to the visual arts, if you know what I'm saying. Beautiful piece here, nice thick castings like everything from Death Studios uh, was at that, at that period. Very nicely painted, super nicely detailed, and has that, that very clean, even, uh, very professional look that all the Death Studios masks had. Now the horns are separate pieces which are glued in. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can. The, uh, the horns were cast separately and glued to the masks. Again, I don't know how many of these there are, but you may get lucky and stumble onto one. And if you do, I hope you don't hurt yourself too badly. I hope you don't stumble onto one up here in the attic because you could fall down the attic steps and break every bone in your body. And we wouldn't want that because you'd probably sue me. So um, until next time, this is Dr. Lady and Bernie Casey the Gargoyle, as voiced by Vic Perrin, saying good night and thank you for checking us out once again here in the Mask Fan Attic. And now, um, I'm going to go take some sort of uh, tranquilizing uh, medication. <laughs>